Hello, and a warm welcome to the program. I'm Melinda Akinlami. Coming up today, National Oil Spill Detection Response Agency and Bielsa State Government investigate suspected oil spill in Foropa Community, Southern Ijo. Niger Delta Development Commission plans aggressive infrastructural development this year. An Edo State Governor Godwin Obaseki wages war against cultism and other crimes in the state. Barely days into the new year, residents of Foropa, an oil-producing community in the southern Ijo area of Bielsa State, have noticed crude oil along its shorelines. A strange occurrence for the community, which has no visible onshore pipeline, leading to suspicion that an offshore crude oil spill has occurred. To ascertain their suspicion, the community invited the National Oil Spill Detection and Response Agency, as well as the State Ministry of Environment, for a joint investigation. The ride to Foropa community was a journey of over four hours on the high sea in a fast-moving speedboat. The inhabitants of the community are primarily fishermen who carry out their business in water, but a recent oil spill leaves the fishes dead and littering the shore. <laughs> On the 3rd of January 2024, oil spillage occurred in my kingdom, which is for the Mediterranean Kingdom and its environment. And the shoreline line is, as I speak, is littered with the oil and the ecosystem is destroyed. And basically we are fishermen and all our fishing gears have been destroyed. A team is here on a joint investigation to the community. It consists of officials of the National Oil Spill Detection and Response Agency, the Bielsa State Ministry of Environment, and the Joy Youth Council. The visit to the seashore reveals dead fishes and crude oil residues. We are here to do the needful and we have collected the samples for further analysis so that uh, we can know where the source of the incident is. And that is the reason why we are here. And we have done that. Whatever thing we have taken is for us to actually know whether what we have collected, there's a percentage of hydrocarbon. Is That's what we can tell you now. While awaiting the results from the samples collected, the youth leader asked the investigating bodies to be honest in their reports. From my own observations, it is a corner that owns causes cause the spill. So we are believing that at the end of the day, the government will do its work and uh, will call to to law the company that caused the spill. The environment was obviously polluted. The sample has been taken, and we know that the Nonsara will do the right thing. And we have maintained peace from the day one of this uh, uh, disaster. We are pleading with whatever agencies that are relevant that they should do the right thing. But the first thing first, the people are suffering. There are no, as you came here, it's obvious that there are no fishes, nothing here for people to eat. The national spokesperson of Ijo Youth Council yeah. Worldwide highlights the unfair treatment meted to host communities by oil producing companies. My call to Nozra is that they should do their lab tests and bring accurate data for us. Because this is not the first time samples have been collected and data has been analyzed. But the outcome has never been favorable to the cause of equity and justice for the Ijoa nation. Now, they cannot tell me that um, Foropa, Ekeni, and Ezotu has visible pipeline crisscrossing the environment. This is an offshore leakage that has occurred. The result from the samples collected is yet to be announced as the community hopes that there will be some form of intervention from both the government and the private sector. In the meantime, the Ijo Youth Council says it wants to be involved in the planned sale of Shell's onshore assets in the Niger Delta. 
The group who revealed this in a media briefing held in Wari Delta State found as an attempt to exclude them from the sale after the company had announced that it's leaving the country. According to the group, their right to first refusal as critical stakeholders must be exercised. The Royal Dutch Shell Group, founded by Shell Dorsey, the first shell company in Nigeria in 1936. In November 1938, Shell Darcy was granted an exploration license to prospect for oil throughout the country. In January 1956, the international oil firm successfully drilled oil at Oloibiri and since then, it has been operating in Nigeria for over 60 years before recently announcing its intention to sell off its onshore assets. For the period of its operations, host communities grappled with the challenges associated with oil exploration, including water and environmental pollution, which resulted in the degradation of their environment, hampering their source of livelihood and income. The Ijo National Youth Council is organizing this media conference to bear their minds on some of these lingering issues, including an alleged move to deny them the right of first refusal in the sale of the shell assets. They appear to be displeased with the arrangement and are calling on the government to carry them along. For the purpose of justice, fairness and equity, our people must be involved and be allowed to participate in the shell's planned sale of onshore assets in Nigeria's Niger Delta region. We have a lot of environmental issues and damage caused by shell in the Niger Delta environment in the over 70 years of their operations that we need to resolve before their investment in the region. Shell also instituted, insulted the Niger Delta people by stating that the reason behind the sale of their onshore assets is insecurity. Invariably, they are telling us that they have been striving on chaos all these years. What a shame and cheap blackmail from Shell. Now they are buying over everything and they bought over Shell through their proxies, through everything, through their people. We're going to resist that just as spokesman and also the government. Oh, so, oh, so the point is, um, this is not an ordinary statement. We're not threatening Nigeria, but we are sure of what we're going to do. After the briefing, they moved to Okoroza, Baramatu in Wari Southwest local government area for a meeting with one of their leaders, Government Ekwempolo, also known as Don Polo, to inform him of their resolve to ensure fairness and equity in the entire process. For us, the purpose is very clear. That we won't take this step that Cell is taking. If they want to sell these assets, the Niger Delta people must be prudent in this process. Hence, anybody that bought these assets or intend to buy these assets is wasting his time. And that is why, as youth, we stand to defend the interests of our people because we know we have capable and the Niger Delta and the John Nation that can bid and be part of this asset. And that is why we are here. The group insists it will extend its meeting to other leaders of Ijo extraction as it hopes to strengthen the resolutions on the sale of Shell onshore assets. In River State, the Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps has destroyed a vast illegal refinery site in the creeks of Degema local government area. The illegal bunkering site situated in a thick mangrove was destroyed by the marine units of the agency following credible intelligence. All materials used in carrying out the illegal activities and four different refining stations were destroyed with some personnel drafted for intensive patrol of the area. Based on credible and sustainable intelligence, the marine unit of the command got an intel concerning activities of illegal oil bunkers taking place in this particular vicinity. They swung into action and took charge immediately. While on the operations, the suspects took off to their heels. We are still on the search to know who are the miscreants, the unscrupulous elements that are doing this nefarious activity in this place. The governing board of the Niger Delta Development Commission, NDDC, says the agency will embark on aggressive project delivery this year to bridge the infrastructural deficit in the region. 
The NDC Managing Director, Mr. Samuel Buku, who stated this during a New Year meeting with staff of the Commission, noted that last year, the board had set the right policy framework, so it's time to leverage and implement it. It's the first meeting in the year between the executive management and staff of the Niger Delta Development Commission, holding here at the Commission headquarters in Port Harcourt, the River State capital. At this meeting are the NDDC Managing Director, Samuel Obuku, as well as other directors and staff of the Commission. This engagement, coming the first month of the year, is expected to set the tone and direction for the year. The executive management wastes no time in disclosing the task ahead, just as a call for continued support from the staff in delivering the mandate of the Commission. For the staff of NGC, you will be also. Everybody that I meet, either as a result of the job or along the line, Every staff have been very awesome. The things that we used to hear about the NDC is not correct. And I must so thank you for always uh, being proud. Thank you to everyone here, up to the cleaners. You've given me love, you've shown me love, you've shown me support. The NDC Managing Director charges the management and staff to brace up for a busy year as a commission will pursue aggressive infrastructural development across the region. It says the commission will take advantage of the policies put in place last year to deliver tangible projects for the residents. It is now the time for action. And in action, we want to see infrastructural development, which is our core mandate as a developmental agent. The NDDC Chief Executive Officer further discloses that the Regional Development Agency will aggregate the opinions and views of stakeholders in the region on key developmental issues at the forthcoming NDDC Stakeholders Summit. The idea of the Stakeholders Summit is to also bring all stakeholders together and also chart a new course for the Niger Delta. The Niger Delta, we will these long stakeholders come together to discuss the Niger Delta. Let us discuss Niger Delta and NDC. So that in areas where they want improvement, let us also go to areas where they want improvement. Some of the staff who are pledged and continued support to the board and management also suggest ways on how to improve the operations of the commission and its workforce. 2024, the MD and his executive, they both told them they are going to do 400 kilometers of road. Week one, 50 has been done. Week two, uh, Tati has been done, making it 80, so that at the end of 2024, we can measure our performance. Sir, in NDDC, retirement is not attractive. Yesterday, I saw one of our retirees, he said, Director, I don't know whether he has stroke or whatever, I don't know. Sir, it's not, uh, in fact, retirement in NDDC is not attractive. Some of the tasks ahead of the NDDC are the delivery of new projects, as well as the completion of abandoned projects amidst other human capital developmental programs in the region. The executive management is hoping that this engagement will get the staff on the same page as it sets out to tackle the development needs of the people of the Niger Delta. Still to come on the program, Supreme Court said to deliver judgment on a river's governorship election tomorrow. We'll give you details of that and other stories. Join us again. Welcome back. The Supreme Court is said to deliver more judgments tomorrow. This time, the Apex Court will be giving its verdict on the controversies concerning the March 18th governorship election in a river state. Mr. Tonye Cole of the Opposition All Progressives Congress APC is challenging the victory of Governor Simfu Barra of the People's Democratic Party PDP on the grounds that he was not qualified to contest the election. His case is a fallout of the appeal court decision of November the 28th, who dismissed his appeal for lacking sufficient and convincing evidence. The APC governorship candidate's contention is that of irregularities and non-compliance of the Electoral Act. His appeal is also against the electoral body, that's the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, and the People's Democratic Party, PDP. 
a five-member panel had reserved judgment on the appeal after all parties in the suit adopted their briefs of arguments. As the date for political party primaries in Edo State to draw closer, the major players say preparations are on to ensure the process to pick a governorship candidate is transparent and satisfactory. In conversations with Channel Television, the parties list the different measures adopted to achieve the goal of producing candidates that will eventually be elected come September the 21st. Our correspondent Jessica Ologusere has this report. The wheels run smoothly as residents of Benin City go about their businesses daily, even though it's a governorship election year for Edo State. The major political parties, conscious of key dates as contained in the INEC timetable and schedule of activities released in September 2023, have also been taking steps to meet each item on the list. The primaries, the first major event, is to hold from 1st to 24th February. The People's Democratic Party has slated the 22nd of February for its primaries. It says the election of three ad hoc delegates per ward comes before that and should happen on the 3rd and 4th of February. The three ad hoc delegates congress is conducted by the national headquarters, just as the primary, the governorship primaries is conducted by the national headquarters of the party. So what we do here is just to be like a clearing house. We basically don't have a direct role to play in the conduct of the Congresses and primaries in the selection of the governorship candidate. The All Progressives Congress has scheduled its primaries for the 17th of February. The National Working Committee has said any member of the party that is willing to contest, qualified and willing to contest the uh, primaries should come and obtain funds. There is going to be a committee to be set up by the National Working Committee between the 8th and 10th of February to screen this aspirant. It's their responsibility. It's the responsibility of the National Working Committee to so do. The Labour Party in the state, which maintains it has no factions, has fixed the 22nd of February for its primaries. None of them have complained of any problem with the guideline. They don't have any problem with it. And so we believe that uh, they have indicated interest in running for the governorship under our platform and that we welcome them all. So we know, we sincerely believe that they will go through it uh, and uh, uh, get it uh, in a manner that will satisfy all of them. Uh, what we are promised to do as a party is to conduct a free, fair and credible primary for all of them. And so we believe they will go through it. The days are getting busier for the political parties in Edo State as the preparations continue towards the governorship election fixed for 21st September 2024, a date by which the electorate would also be highly involved in the electoral process. Jessica Olugose, Channels Television News. Meanwhile, the governor of Edo State, Mr. Godwin Obaseki, has given a blanket approval to security agencies to deal decisively with issues of cultism. Mr. Obaseki asked that other related crimes like drug abuse should also be addressed, as most recent homicide cases in the state can be linked to it. He was speaking after the monthly Security Council meeting held at the government house in Benin City, the state capital, where he asked the council, which has two new members, to beef up security as political activities gather momentum. As you will see from the security reports, I believe we're doing well to build long term better particularly as it relates to the issue of cultism. The social, social behavior, and as I told you, uh, you have a, a blanket check whoever, no matter how many places they are in this society, supporting cultists and cultism. We are spreading our laws. It must be prosecuted. We must put an end to the senseless and needless killings in the name of God's cultism communities. Similarly, we will we, we'll need assistance in dealing with one of the causes, the root causes of these senseless killings, which is the use, very high use of drugs and drug abuse states. We will be counting on you. 
use your offices to work with us as a state to make sure that we have peace and peaceful elections in the state. Various parties will be having pre-election activities from this weekend and the calling will be for full deployment across the state in various state conferences or primaries in the case of the Cross River State Government has provided productive assets to over 800 households across the three local government areas to help portion the economic effect. Speaking after the presentation of the productive assets to the beneficiaries, the Secretary General explained that the essence of the exercise is to enable the residents to earn a living without depending on anyone. According to the Governor Vasi A2, the gesture is one which has come to stay as his administration is one that will make the people become self-dependent. Insecurity and inadequate funding for capacity expansion are some of the problems bedeviling Nigeria's agriculture sector and pushing her further to the fringes of food insecurity. This is why the Cross River State Government has empowered over 800 farmers with assets, including grinding machines, cassava processing machines, and drying machines to help shore up production of their farm produce. The state government is convinced that these empowerment tools will help the farmers expand their capacity for cultivation and food processing. The idea is actually to empower the most vulnerable in society, not to make them to remain too, too dependent on their relatives or on government or to remain destitute, but to add value to their lives, to give them what they can actually use to, to add to the economic uh, uh, base. This gesture is not a one-off exercise, as more than 800 beneficiaries across three local government areas in the state are being presented with similar agricultural tools. We have been doing this for two years there. going, Thank and we do you. it at least we every three months. Today, one of the delivery platforms, Fadama, has called us together to distribute items that have been procured from the fund allocated by His Excellency, the Governor of Cross River State. The beneficiaries expressed their gratitude to the state government for the empowerment program. I am a shoe, uh, a shoe mender. Through this engine, I will be a shoemaker and my family will enjoy it. So I will be very happy, very, very happy. I said thank you, my governor. Thank you, my daddy. Thank you. You have done it so well for me. May God bless you. They are, however, encouraged to make judicious use of the tools. I, I want to urge you that uh, it's an opportunity for you to, to improve in whatever you were doing, so that at least you know, this can give you a, a good revenue. Like our brother, uh, every man said there, that uh, it would be better in life to the point that he will raise money for you to pay his uh, children's school fee and put the food on their table. Beyond the presentation of imputes to farmers, the federal and state governments must, among other things, increase budgetary allocation to agriculture, improve livestock and agricultural production strategies and storage facilities, and ensure farmers' access to microcredit schemes and ready markets for their produce if significant progress must be achieved in the agriculture sector. That's the program today. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Melinda Akinlan.